So we're now joining the A3. Easy to recognise the freeways or the autobahn signs. They're always blue and white. And the A3 is the oldest freeway in Germany, unfortunately commissioned to be laid or built by that terrible person, Adolf Hitler. He wanted to have, after all their fiasco um, during the First World War, because they couldn't get um, goods quick enough from uh, to the east, that's why one of the first thing he did was to have... And there is a dense network of freeways or autobahns, motorways as we call them, back home in Germany, around 13,000 kilometres, that's about 8,000 miles, and on uh, around half you don't have a speed limit. Here we do, you can see 80 is uh, uh, given here, that's about... 50 miles an hour, but the coaches can't go any faster than 100 anyway, that's about 61 miles. Oh, 62, thank you. <laughs> I said about, I said about. I was not being specific. Oh, sheep. Oh, the sheep, oh, okay. sections well if we if we're nearer to the built up areas then of course there are always the uh, signs up but if you feel a whoosh on the left hand side that's one of the powerful engines the BMWs the Porsche the Mercedes the Audi But there is an advisory speed limit, which is 130 kilometres, that's 80 miles an hour. But usually people take no notice of that. But you do, I would say in general, in general, the German drivers are quite careful, I'm just saying in general, because to get your licence in the first place costs an awful lot of money. Nowadays, we can, uh, the young people, they can take their driver's license when they're 17, they can do the driver's license, but you can't drive by yourself until you're 18. So if you're taking it when you're 17, before you take the license, do your driving lessons that all have to be done via a professional driving school, then you, two people have to be designated over the age of 25 with no points on their license who will be sitting in the passenger seat while you're driving the car until you're 18. And then you're on probation now for two years when you first get your license. If you are caught speeding, driving under the influence, license is revoked and it costs a whole lot more money. You have to take all kinds of psychological exams and it costs a whole lot of money before you get your license back again. And then you're on probation for four years. So a really long time. I'd say to get your license now, we're talking about 2,000, 2,500 euros. But then you've got it for life, that's why people like to hold on to their licences because you've always got a nice photo of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hope when the police yeah. stop you, you'll say, oh, we haven't changed, haven't changed. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <I'm> smiling. <laughs> and also, if you are caught tailgating, then very high fines. Very, very high fines because they especially on um, on the autobahns in the direction of Stuttgart. Stuttgart is the um, capital of the state of Baden-Württemberg. That's where, of course, all the Mercedes or most of the Mercedes factories, Porsche factories, and they have a lot of the test runs on the 
those particular sections and very, very unfortunately there have been a lot of accidents with the test drivers practically, you know, flashing the lights and forcing people off the, off the roads and that's why very, very high, high fines for taking. We have a lot of trucks or lorries on our roads. That's because Germany is a uh, <coughs> transit country. And also on many of the freeways, we don't have the tolls yet. So it's much cheaper to drive through Germany than um, if they were going through France, for example. Uh, but when you will notice fewer trucks is on a Sunday, you might have been told this already, as of Saturday evening, 10 o'clock or Saturday night, 10 o'clock, if you don't have a special permit, you aren't allowed to drive your truck until from Saturday night, 10 until Sunday night, 10. That's to give everyone on Sunday a nice opportunity for trackless or lorryless roads. It used to be when I first moved over, it was two days. It was Friday, 10 o'clock, until Sunday, 10 o'clock. And I think they wanted to reintroduce that. That's why if you're a, on a coach on um, on a Saturday, you see all the parking lots, they're all full of, uh, of lollies and trucks, all waiting for 10 o'clock Sunday evening to come around so you they can start. Western countries were involved in that war, even though it started off as a religious war in Germany between uh, the Lutherans, Protestants and the Catholics, but by the end, most powers were involved and uh, the, all the forested areas in all countries were severely depleted because everything was made with wood. All the houses, all the ships, all the carts, but back then in 1648, Germany came up with a reforesting system or an afforesting as a, we sometimes call it and that has been going on ever since and it's because of that that we still have such a, a lot of forests in Germany even though that we have a lot of trouble with them you do see stressed areas of trees, not so much from the roads, but when you get inside, yes you do, mainly because of the very, very hot weather that we've been having in the last few years, particularly last year. And because of the various tree diseases, especially with the softwood trees, we've got the bark beetle. Also a lot of our um, oak trees have been um, severely affected by a type of um, beetle that attacks the uh, oak trees. But no matter where you are in Germany, even in uh, northern Germany, you're no more than a few minutes away from a forested area. And that's, if any Germans emigrate, that's what they miss the most if they emigrate to a place where there's not a lot of uh, uh, forests apart from the beer and the bratwurst <laughs> that comes first as my mum always said of course she moved from a very rural area to London and uh, she loved the parks we have beautiful parks in London but she really missed the forest and when we used to come back to visit all the relatives that was one of her first ports of call after she'd kissed and hugged everyone mum was off to the nearest forest 
So you see a lot of the fallen wood like we see here to the right, but all the undergrowth are cleared by municipal workers. I often get asked, are the woods cleared? Because in a lot of countries they're not. But you can see, the, the like you can see here on the right, the wood prices have really dropped because of uh, that hot weather it's and a lot of the trees have had to be felled that's why you see this will all be made into firewood and that's why at the moment it's really if you're buying your wood now for your wood stoves then you're getting a very very good price Wildlife, what do we have in these forests? They're, they're mixed tree forests. We have the deciduous trees, the evergreens. Standard wildlife, you will see along the way, we will have the deer, danger deer crossing, and they do attempt to come onto the freeways, unfortunately. We have the foxes, badgers, hare, and one particular animal who's causing a lot of problems and becoming increasingly in many, in many parts of the wild pig, the wild boar. Mm. They used to be a chai creatures, you might have seen them very, very early in the mornings, but now I say many are becoming quite cheeky mm -hmm. and are entering into the villages and the towns in the night time. Mm. At this time of the year, people's gardens are the most beautiful you've got the lovely flowers many certainly those who live in the country areas you will have a little kitchen garden cabbage patch fruit will be grown vegetables will be grown and uh, you might think to yourself one morning oh, I'll pop out have a look how the gardens doing and you'll have a real shock during the night the wild pigs have been at it and ruined your flowers eaten what they could and uh, off they've gone and you don't hear them most of the houses here uh, you have the roller shutters and that that uh, blocks out of course most houses or practically all houses don't have air conditioning so in the hot weather it keeps the heat out in the cold weather it keeps the the heat in and uh, it also it blocks off a lot of noise so you don't hear them and you'll have a real shock that your beautiful garden has been overturned. Many golf courses have been ruined during the night times and the uh, wood soccer pitches. Mm. They're not the wood, sorry, the lawn soccer oh, yeah. pitches are um, a favourite with the um, wild boar. Why are they suddenly doing this? Well, uh, as I mentioned, we have a lot of oak trees and the wild boar they love acorns and they rummage around in the ground rummage for acorns but this gives them a kind of oh dear, this gives them a kind of an acid in their stomachs and to neutralize that they have to rummage around a lot more for worms and bugs in the forest and Unfortunately, we've been told not enough of those worms and bugs, so that's why they're um, going for people's gardens, golf courses, or the soccer lawns. See here, they have it on some areas, they have the fencing in an effort to keep everything and the wildlife off the roads. Wolves were reintroduced a few years ago. They were extinct for many years. We now have around 30 packs. A couple are in this forest as well. This is the extension of the forest, the Frankfurt forest, the Frankfurt city has its own forest. But bears, the brown bears were officially here the last time at the end of the 1800s. Although it's only a matter of time before we have them back here again, where they're already in Poland, Czech Republic. So they only have to sneak over the border with, with or without a visa. <laughs> Although I do have a funny story about Bruno the bear a couple of years ago. He did sneak in to the Bavarian forest from the Czech Republic and was causing everybody a merry dance. Now, 
the bear was supposed to be tranquilized and taken back to the Czech Republic, but no one could uh, spy him long enough to shoot any cartridges and he, that would put him to sleep so that they could load him onto something and take him back to the Czech Republic. And he was uh, leading all the hunters, a uh, merry dance. People were getting very nervous down in the Bavarian forest. Uh, because they'd come out one morning and uh, bins would be unturned and garden would be looking dishevelled and they were all terrified they'd walk out one day and this great big bear would be standing in front of them. It was such news that uh, they named him Bruno the Bear and after the real news out on the hour they used to tell us what Bruno the Bear was up to down in the Bavarian forest. It was hilarious they had bear experts flown in from all over the world to get this bear tranquilized but in the end poor Bruno poor Bruno he wasn't tranquilized I don't know why he was shot Bruno was shot but he can still be seen today they had him stuffed Bruno was stuffed and he can still be seen in one of the museums in um, in the Munich but that's the story about Paul Bruno. But it was hilarious, always hearing about after the most important world news, we heard what Bruno was doing down in the Bavarian <laughs> forest. We started also to drive past farmland. Now, we mostly have grain crops in these parts. Also, in the uh, when we're driving back to the ED, we'll be going on country roads also grain crops. We do see some livestock, or we did see a flock of sheep, but the mostly the dairy herds, the larger dairy herds much further south on the border to Austria. We also have large dairy herds in, the, in North Germany or in the east and the very, very large farms or what we call the large farms are still in the eastern part of Germany. That's where they were when Germany was still divided. They were always in the eastern part. That's where the cooperatives used to be. The forest now coming up on the right, this is known as the Spessart or the wood, Woodpecker Forest. And uh, you you will have all have heard of it, you think you don't, but you will have because I'm sure as a child you were read to or you read yourself the fairy tales from the Brothers Grimm. And the Brothers Grimm were born with just saw a sign for the town of Harnell. The Brothers Grimm were born and brought up in Harnell and they took great inspiration from the Woodpecker Forest for their fairy tales. Especially one of them, we all remember Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. There used to be low mineral mines in the Schwesard, in the Woodpecker Forest. So you had to be small to work in them. That's where they got their idea of, of the dwarfs. So this year we have an abundance of hay. In fact, the farmers, I think they some of them are already on their third hay making procedure. That's good. And here on the sign here on the right, we have the uh, how many minutes it is to the next junctions. So, so 11 minutes to the Frankfurt Junction, that's the busiest in Europe. And we also have another 13 minutes until we reach Frankfurt International. So you will be seeing planes in the sky, Frankfurt International. I think it's the third busiest in Europe. So they are harvesting already. 